All right, so here's my 96 Grand Cherokee. I built the motor. It's got a little bit over a thousand right now. The motor's broken good and everything's running good. And all of a sudden it doesn't want to start. Well, and this is the part we're going to replace. Crankshaft position sensor. And this is kind of weird because it had me going at first. The symptoms were I just filled it up full of fuel. Okay, it was, you know, it was on E or close to it. And on my way home from work, I put fuel in it and filled it up. I'm thinking, okay, I get home. And I'm wondering if I happen if if I shut it off, going somewhere else, if I would have been stranded. But basically, that's my electric fan in here in the background. I need to put my timing delay relay in. But look, my, the fuel light comes on. I just filled it up. I know it's full. I filled it up like two miles from my house. And I know my battery is not at nine volts, but everything else looks good, but it's on E. So gauges will tell you a lot. I'm cranking, I'm cranking, I'm cranking. I keep cranking. I don't hear the fuel pump. I don't hear the, bzz, the fuel pump. Um, you know, of course you don't hear the fuel pump. It's the first thing. Look at this. No fuel is going to come out. None. I just put a fuel pump in it. So I read on the forum and the guy says, well, your crank position sensor can, can do weird stuff. So he's like, check for spark. Why? Well, I, I said, you know, I could do that. Or I could reach right over here. And this is where it comes into the harness. And I know this goes in my crank position sensor. So I'm going to unplug it. Now I know the vehicle's not going to start because the crank position sensor. I covered this in an earlier video, but here's my electric fan now. And it does help with the gas mileage. I haven't driven it that much until this happened. But I can I can tell a little bit of difference. Uh, it's got this automatic, it's got this gas mileage average calculation on these old 96 Grand Cherokees. Now, look at that. There's a difference. All I did was unplug that. So I know my tank is full. However, I know it's not going to crank because my crankshaft position sensor is unplugged. And what I'm getting from the forums, that's an old post. Got, this guy said it is rare, but when these things do go out, sometimes they, they short out. And the, the place that had it real close was, was AutoZone. They say use an original Mopar one, I'll order one. But... That's what we're gonna replace. And they also say don't don't get rid of this piece, this little bit of piece right here. It's not magnetic, it's got this little felt on it. And they say that will eventually, this is just basically a magnet and it checks when the flywheel comes back around, but I'll go down there and show you. And there's holes in that little flex plate technically, this is an automatic. Basically this is your spacer and when you crank it up, this will eventually disappear. So. I'm going to replace this and uh, I'll get on there and show you how I do it. So let's check one more thing. Because first it was dry until I unplugged it. Now look. See the fuel coming out? Before it wouldn't do that. Yeah, it should be more, but it, it'll get the air out of the system. But before it wouldn't do any fuel. It was actually dry until I unplugged it and tried it. To me, that tells me that's a crank, the crankshaft position sensor, which is actually over here. Let's see, right down in here. Yeah, that's it right there. Those wires come right there. So I'm gonna get out of the truck and show you what I'm doing. I'm on the driver's side and what I want you to see is this. This is it right here, okay? This is your shifter cable, All right? It comes around and tells you transmission, park reverse neutral, whatever, here it is. You can take that off and get that out of the way. Uh, but if you look up in here, this is your crank shaft position tissue. Hey, what are y'all doing? Well, that was wild. I wish I would have showed you that. You hear that loud noise? A couple of sparrows around here fighting and 
hit right under my Jeep. That's crazy. They were literally right next to me. One of them hit me in my side with his wing. You had to move some of the stuff out of the way to make it easier on you. But there's a, a, a bolt right here. Okay. There's a bolt right here. All right, so what I'm doing here is I got a, a ratchet with a swivel an extension and it's 11 millimeter i'm just going to take this bolt out right here i could have got my little electric ratchet and did it but i'll just once i get it out i'll show you it's going to take your time with it okay we're going to see some people say oh you got to take this bracket off you got to take that off you got to take this off but swivel all right 11 millimeter on my vehicle this is it right here this little piece this is the bolt I had to pull out, right? This little piece sits on top of that like that. This basically goes into a hole in the transmission like this. And the flex plate comes around it right here. And there's a hole in the, the flex plate in certain spots. And it tells the engine where it's at. So it tells you where the crankshaft is at. So that's why it's called a crankshaft position sensor. That's why you can only put the flex plate or flywheel on one way and i'll cover that in some other videos when i put an engine together or something i got a couple of engines i'm doing for different vehicles and uh i'll cover that basically i unscrewed this and it took a little while because it didn't want to come out and i turned this up and there's just enough room to pull this out okay so there's your crankshaft position sensor there's the old one here's the new one okay so I'm gonna put that in and we'll see what happens, okay? And a lot of people say use the new part only part because they fail or not good quality or whatever, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a shot. And uh, this thing has a lifetime warranty. So if it fails, hopefully it doesn't leave me stranded somewhere, but because this is where it goes. Right here, where you see my finger moving, that's the hole that it goes in. Let's see if I can get up there and get you a little better video, okay? That's the hole it goes in. Anybody can see that. So what I'm doing is I'm feeding, because I know the wire goes back across the back side of the engine, is I'm feeding that across first. You want to be careful, I don't want to rip these wires, but it's got to line up in the hole just right. Would it be easier for me to just do this and not make a video? Yeah, but there we go slid in the thing i hate about this crap see these little sharp edges right here and right here like if i got my head up here like this smack right in the head and i'll come out from a vehicle and somebody be like what happened gotta be careful it shit hurts when you lean your head up you concentrate on what you're doing you forget there's a sharp edge there and smack you know Okay, so there she is, okay, with that piece back on it. So yes, it would be easier to move this cable out of the way. Right there, there's position sensor right here. There's a bolt that's right there. Okay, right here. This is, like I said, this is your shifter cable. The crankshaft position sensor is right there. It's in that hole. This little brackets over the top of it. I've seen them without the brackets, but basically there it is, okay? And I just keep this heat shield on there if you can. It keeps the cable from getting too hot from the exhaust right here. Okay, so this got a shield on, it's a pain in the butt, but it keeps this cable from melting from this exhaust. I've seen them off too, but whatever. Okay, so now we're back up top here. I've run this cable back here. I uh, ran it back here in the back. And that's the thing, you wanna run the cable. There's other tricks that you can do, like one guy was saying, grab you a piece of string or something, and that way when you pull this connector out, you can attach a string to the new one and pull this connector, and which that, that's a pr probably a pretty good trick. Feels like it's caught up on something. All right, so there she is. All connected up. So let's go inside and see what it looks like. OK. 
Fuel gauge works. We'll see what happens. Man, this thing fired right up. It ain't playing around. All right, so just to recap, if your key's on and you know you got plenty of fuel in it because I just filled it up and you don't have any fuel pressure, I didn't verify spark because I kind of jumped that one, but I just put a few new fuel pump in it a couple of months ago. Right after I put the engine in, it drove for about a week or two and I didn't hear the fuel pump working. So if you don't hear the fuel pump, it doesn't want to start. You can check the spark, but if you know you've got fuel in it and you turn the key on it, it looks like that, that fuel gauge. Of course, you have the fuel light, right? Because it says it's empty. Unplug the crankshaft position sensor, see if the gauges start working. So I guess it's rare, but and it seems to be cranking easier. So that was the other thing. This thing didn't want to crank up when it was cold first thing. It didn't want to, even if I cycled the fuel pump, I had to give a little bit of the throttle because it didn't want to crank up. And I thought, well, maybe with a bigger throttle body and the bigger injectors and and um, and it had a rough time idling at first. I had to give it gas. And I thought, well, maybe my, because my battery was dead, you got a dead battery, you jump start it and you don't want to stay idling. Well, it forgets its, it forgets its brain, I guess you want to call it. So, all right, and she's fixed. running so that's a crankshaft position sensor on the 96 jeep grand cherokee laredo 